Well, Jim Harbaugh and the San Francisco 49ers certainly, along with the Green Bay Packers, the talk of the NFL here in 2011. Second best record to Green Bay in the league. They've won seven in a row. They're only lost week two here at home in overtime against the Dallas Cowboys. Ken Wizen on his 39 wins, including the postseason. Tied for second most in Cardinal franchise history, just three shy of the all-time leader, Don Coriel. Speaking of Jim Harbaugh, let's check in along the sidelines before we kick it off with Laura Oakman. Tom, Jim Harbaugh told his team last night, do not look down on this team. Do not read our papers. Do not look at our record. Do not look at their record. Watch their film because this Cardinals team is not a team playing like they are three and six. He told them there is no team more dangerous than a desperate team. So keep your eyes and your minds on the details today because we need to expect to see anything and everything. Tom. Boy, thanks so much. San Francisco won the toss, the third to getting the football until the start of the second half. What a year it's been for this guy. What a week it's been for David Akers. Perfect in field goal tries and a big win against the Giants. Had an onside kick, had even made a tackle last week. And he's a big part of this formula. When you're going to live with playing great defense and running the ball, obviously getting points out of your kicking game is huge. Well, Akers puts the left foot on it. And that's for the end zone. Well, here comes Arizona offensively, led by John Skelton. He improved to 2-0 this season as a starter with that come-from-behind win against Philadelphia last week. And they need one of these young receivers opposite Larry Fitzgerald to emerge. Obviously, San Francisco is going to do everything they can to shut down on Larry Fitzgerald. That's going to leave an opportunity for one of these other guys to step up. Those numbers, career day numbers in the young career of John Skelton. He had an eye on Andre Robertson, complete second and ten. The 49ers, they have been simply spectacular on defense, among the very best in the NFL. What impresses me most, and they lead the league in rushing defense, is they do it with just their front seven. They don't have to bring the secondary guys down into the box to stop the run the way so many other teams do. First carry for Chris Wells, and he picks up three. It'll bring a third down and seven for Arizona. Wells off to the best start of his young career for nearly 600 yards, seven rushing touchdowns. He's played through a hamstring injury and knee injury, but he's having a good year. And this is what Ken Wisenhut wants to do. This whole organization is being molded in the Steelers style of play. It goes back to his background. We talked about the transformation defensively, offensively. He would love to run the ball well and build a play action game off of it. It's Gerald, and how about the play defensively by Carlos Rogers? So three and out on the opening drive offensively for Arizona. Just a nice job by Rodgers closing on the ball. We're going to look all day. Obviously, you got to account for Larry Fitzgerald. He had help over the top in the defense. Vic Fangio told us there's only going to be about a dozen times in the game that Larry Fitzgerald's going to be one on one with someone. Dave Zastadil punts it away to the always dangerous Ted Ginn Jr. And a good return by him up to the 45, but there is a penalty flag down on the field. During the kick, holding, number 26 receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first down. A few moments ago before San Francisco was going to come out on offense, Jim Hart while making sure his quarterback is feeling it. And that relationship is a big part of what the 49ers are doing right now. 
Jim Harbaugh unique to a lot of coaches in the NFL 15 years in this league he knows very well what Alex Smith has to face on any given instance Alex Smith has a great deal of faith in Jim Harbaugh in that he knows he's going to put him in the best position possible to be successful. Well, the touchdowns and a three interception. Throw it on first down, and that's Boyle and Edwards, and it's incomplete. 49ers have Frank Gore back in their lineup. He did not play the second half after injuring his knee last week against the Giants. And this offensive line came under some criticism early in the season, but since those first two or three games, I think this is one of the best young, developing young lines in the game. They've got three first round draft choices on that offensive line. Here's Gore. He stuffed at the line of scrimmage, third down and long. Calais Campbell wrapped him up, a little extra pushing and shoving. Coming into this game, these division rivals, both teams made it very clear they do not like one another a little bit. Well, that's division rivalry. It's just the way this thing usually goes when you've got so much on the line with division games. Love throwing the football to his tight end. But he's looking down the field. Caught by Michael Crabtree, run out of bounds at the Arizona 43 yard line. A beautifully thrown ball by Alex Smith. It looks like Patrick Peterson, the top here, starts to, oh, he slips right there. I thought maybe he had fallen off coverage. He's got the speed to make it up there. But obviously, one-on-one -on -one with Michael Crabtree, if you slip like that, huge conversion for the San Francisco 49ers. 38-yard completion to Crabtree, who's been limited by a troublesome left foot this year, which he's broken twice in the last two and a half seasons. Four off to the right side, picks up three. Talk about all these young linebackers and young players in the Arizona defense. They're very excited about this future defensively. They are very excited, and particularly you talked about the linebacker position. Sam Acho is seeing more and more play, obviously. O'Brien Schofield comes in a lot for Clark Hagens, and the back end. We just saw Patrick Peterson, not his best showing, but this guy can be special. Fingertips of Braylon Edwards. It'll bring a third down for the 49ers. Talked earlier about the young players that are developing for the Arizona Cardinals. You know, the offseason hurt these guys. Jefferson, Schofield, Washington, Williams. These are all guys in your rookie year. You're just trying to survive. You're really counting on that offseason going into the second year. Well, we obviously didn't have that with uh, the collective bargaining agreement and the negotiations. That really hurt the development of these young players. Good protection, good throw, first down, and again it's Pratt free. A gain of third down in the first lengthy third down conversion for the 49ers. Nice pass from Alex Smith. Looks like Peterson slipped again. You know, they took the tarp off this field very early. And the field conditions, although it's not raining real hard, it's just sprinkling a little bit, the field conditions here, as is typical in San Francisco, could progressively become an issue. Four. Behind an extra offensive lineman, Alex Boone, a couple of them, in fact, along the offensive line on first down. You love the patience of Frank Gore as a play caller. The thing I love about Frank Gore, 
he's always going to get you some positive yards. You're not going to be in a lot of long second and 10, second and 12. He's always going to get you something. Alex Smith goes to the bench. They bring in the Wildcat, getting a little cute there. Drives going pretty well. Five yard penalty, still second down. And you bring in Kendall Hunter out of the Wildcat formation, and you're backed up five yards. Tom, we've talked about this before. I, I don't care for the Wildcat. If if you don't have a lot of other options, if you're not playing well as an offense, you don't have a good quarterback, fine, go ahead and use it. Why take Alex Smith out of the game, particularly when you've got a nice drive going, and take away that option of the big play, the shot to the end zone in the passing game? Well, a second and six becomes second down at 11. Short drop and knocked down by Calais Campbell, and that's a big man at six feet eight. With long arms, this guy's a little Julius Peppers like in terms of the long arms. His ability as he comes off the rush, realizes he can't get home, he'll just stop and put those long arms up and knock the ball down. He and Dockett are very much a part of this maturing defense of the Arizona Cardinal. They probably have much better pass rush ability than what defensive coordinator Ray Horton's used to coming from Pittsburgh in the interior defensive line. Bunch formation to the left side. Crossing pattern and too tall for Michael Crabtree. So really, that Wildcat formation, which led to a penalty, took away a very impressive drive. Second and six went to second and 11, and they can't convert on second or third downs. This will be a lengthy field goal try. Of course, there's really not such a thing for this guy, David Akers. He's hit on 23 out of 25, went to five Pro Bowls in his first 12 years with Philadelphia. And this will be a 46-yard field goal attempt. We'll see who got a hand on it. Logic would tell you it's Calais Campbell. He's blocked two of them this year, four of them in his career. Bottom line is Arizona blocks the kick. The drive stalls. And excitement for Ken Wizenhut. Clayus Campbell, we just talked about the long arms of Clayus Campbell. This is his fifth blocked field goal in his career. And again, the long arm is athleticism. That's huge because the 49ers lead the league in red zone efficiency. Well, from the 36 yard line, they give it to Chris Wells. And the former number one pick out of Ohio State brings it up to the 44 yard line watch right in here he just simply slices through the gap between the center and the guard over the top look at that long arm come up right there and block it down this that's a big play because the 49er formula we've talked about it play good defense run the ball they lead the league in red zone efficiency you get in scoring position and come away with no points that's a great start for Arizona. Intercepted. Skelton forced to throw into traffic. And Patrick Willis has his first interception of the year, a 49er defense, which has forced more turnovers than any defense in the NFL. Well, it looked like Terrell Brown right here, like he had it and says, you know what, I'm going to tip it up right. Look at that. He bounces right up between the two of them. Patrick Willis comes up with it. You talk about the ultimate in teamwork. Working together on it. How many times is that thing going to hit the ground? Willis among the very best defenders in the NFL since day one. When he was the 11th pick out of Auburn in 2007, they give it to Gore. First down off the left side, picks up close to five. You, know, you look at so many areas of the game and you talk about this 49er team being a well-rounded team. 
Average starting field position. Such a big factor in many games. They lead the league in that quarter category. They lead the league in putting their opponents in the worst average starting field position. Well, last week against the Giants, the, the Giants best field position to start the game to start uh, during the game was the 22 yard line. That's a long way to go to come up with a score. Kendall Hunter. There's one out of bounds short of the first down. Well you look at the turnaround six and ten last year eight and one this year minus one in the turnover margin best in the NFL at plus 13 this year. And what's most impressive when you look at this a lot of times you come in look at right here. These are the same players that last year struggled so much. You got to give John Harbaugh and his staff a great deal of credit. They didn't add a whole lot of new blood to this necessarily. They took the same parts, a very talented team, and are winning with it. Third down and three. And the slant is incomplete. And defended nicely by the safety, Adrian Wilson, up on the line of scrimmage. Lock it up with Vernon Davis. Yeah, Vernon Davis, the big tight end outside. Adrian Wilson, one of the best safeties in the league. Again, this isn't necessarily his forte one on one matchup. Vernon Davis, unique to this team, a tight end, is the fastest player on the squad. I'm having a hard time understanding why Vernon Davis is jumping in the air. Him jumping in the air cost him catching that pass. So now 49 yards out. And that is no good. So back to back drives, a block kick, and now a rare miss by David Akers. And a poor start for David Akers. He's been so good this year. You were liking that conversation with his holder to a golfer visiting with his caddy. Yeah, was this we, early in the uh, warm ups, we saw him struggling a little bit, and it's like a guy, you know, coming off the driving range going, hey, you know, you, what do you see in the swing here? What do we do to get that right? You don't have to worry about David Akers, though. This, is, this guy's been at it a long time. But this is very uncharacteristic of the 49ers. Two opportunities in scoring territory to come away with no points has got to embolden the Arizona Cardinals. I like that word in Boulder. That's nice. Second down, they play fake it to Wells. Good protection. And another poor throw by Skelton. Appeared to be tipped by Patrick Willis, but even the intended target, Fitzgerald, surrounded by red jerseys. This is the game we're going to play all day. Vic Fangio told us, the defensive coordinator of the 49ers, there's going to be about a dozen times we get singled up on Larry Fitzgerald. Otherwise, we're going to have a guy in front and back from side to side. Skelton's either going to have to pick his shots or check them into those opportunities to get to Larry Fitzgerald when he's not doubled. Arizona with punt. Heavy pressure off the ends by Justin Smith and Ray McDonald. We talked about the 49ers being very comfortable in playing the run with just their seven man front. Likewise, they're very comfortable in just putting a four man rush. When you can get to the quarterback with just a four man rush, allows you a lot of things with your secondary. Full start, number 52 offense, five yard penalty remains, fourth down. Seven twenty three to play here in the opening quarter from rainy San Francisco. It started raining here last night. Only shot for a short while earlier this morning. Left footed Zaskadil with a beautiful punt. Backing up again to the seven yard line. Flag down again. And this will take away perhaps a big return by Ginn.
55 yard punt by the former Ohio University Bobcat, the Harvard on the hockey, they call it Zastadil. Who else? Who else? Who else goes to that school? Who else went to that school? I Matt Lauer was a big name. Mike <laughs> Schmidt went no, there. Bob some, Brindley, former Giant, great catcher, went there. There was somebody there. else. Uh, Tom Brenneman. Maybe. During their play, there were fouls by both teams. Holding, number 86 of the kicking team. Holding, number 26 of the receiving team. Penalties will offset. Fourth down. 49ers dodged a bit of a bullet there because they were about to be pushed down deep into their own territory. This exchange of field position we talked about that has so favored the 49ers in their formula for success. That's an expensive penalty for Arizona to now have to repunt it. But repunt it, they will. Punt it again from the 38 yard line. We drafted David Zastadil in Baltimore. I tell you what, this is a, a very good. He can boom it like very few punters. His problem, he's had some injuries in the way he's bounced around from team to team, but he's capable of cranking one off at any given time. That last one was 55 yards. They'll try it again. This time again from the 12, and another penalty flag comes down. Excellent coverage by Arizona. Reggie Walker chopping down Ginn. Well, they were fighting each other. You can see here the gunner down. These guys are hand fighting all the way foul. down. Face mask. Uh, they're right there. Number 89, the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. It's DeMarco Smith. Samson, the rookie out of San Diego State. I thought we were going to get the holding called on the 49ers, but the minute the hand went to the face mask, it was going to get called. So now Gore and company get it for a third time. Still a scoreless game. 6.58 to play in the opening quarter from San Francisco. Third offensive possession for Alex Smith and the 49ers. A scoreless game. Going to throw it on first down. Incomplete to Delaney Walker. Of course, Alex Smith, the number one overall pick in the 2005 draft, and really to the surprise of so many, was given one more shot to live up to that draft choice when Jim Harbaugh took over. Well, it's turned out to be a home run decision. After battling through some good times with a lot more bad, major shoulder surgery, seven different offensive coordinators, Alex Smith appears to have caught his. You know, got his feet from underneath him. And he's played so well. Goes out of the pocket. Going up third and long. Tom, when we were here in week two against when they played the Cowboys, remember we sat down with Alex Smith and it would be really easy to say, look, he fell in with love with Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh fell in love with him. Let's remember now, because of the collective bargaining agreement and negotiations, they weren't around one another. It was kind of a leap of faith for these guys to come back together. To a degree, it's because Alex Smith really didn't have any place to go because of those suspension of negotiations, or I should say the ability to take a trade. So it was a leap of faith for them to come back together, and obviously it's paid off. Short throw, and Davis slipped the tackle. We'll see where they spot it. He is very close to a first down and appears to have it by about a half a yard. Well, just a quick little flat route. Alex Smith looking down the field and now counting on the athleticism of a Vernon Davis just avoiding the tackle there. Just enough to dance along the sidelines to get the first down. Bounced off of Michael Adams and able to extend enough. And it is a 49er first down at their own 47. <laughs> Davis inside the 30.
Adrian Wilson again one on one again one of the best safeties down the box but in the open field this is a bit of a mismatch and right now he's saying I can't cover this guy any better than that all over it and hear the athleticism of Vernon Davis the quarterback trusting his tight end to come up with the ball Adrian Wilson right now going I don't know if I can do it any better than that gain of 27 yards and Davis shaken up walks to the 49ers sideline maybe just got something in his eye big hole and Frank Gore another 49er first down to the 11 yard line big blocks from Adam Snyder and the fullback Bruce Miller I want you to watch the right guard here and watch the patience of Gore just that subtle little hesitation and now he sees the hole and he has that explosion that balance to now get into that second level and then the strength kicks in this is at the heart what the 49ers love to do the patient running game of Frank Gore two additional offensive linemen check in and Gore for a gain of two you know one thing Alex Smith has not done even going back to when he first came out of Utah he rarely makes mistakes once the 49ers get inside the red zone he has been just about as dependable as anybody in the league this side of Aaron Rodgers one of the determinants for success in this league has always been red zone efficiency that's not just touchdowns that's touchdowns and field goals and not making mistakes down here Again, a big part of the equation for the success for the 8 1 49. Safe throw. Miller, did he get in? No, he stepped out of bounds at the four yard line. Miller, a former defensive end in college at Central Florida. In fact, two times was his conference defensive player of the year. Boy goodness that is awful close he's got control watch him step along the sideline he's in bounds has the presence of mind oh right there looked like he might have stepped out of bounds otherwise he puts the ball in his right hands looked like he might not have touched down but that left foot they're determining I guess one out of bounds here's the challenge I think this is a poor decision to challenge this call pretty clear the left foot stepped out of bounds but he's doing that blind because I guarantee you the view he's getting up and you know that process yeah in a perfect world and the coach is up in the booth and they see it or don't see it it's amazing how much those decisions are emotional decisions rather than intellectual decisions that looks like it right there he may have stepped on it. well they're going to take a look at it 316 to play and the 49ers challenging the call on the field. Well, we understand it is not a challenge. We saw the red flag thrown by Jim Harbaugh as if to challenge the call on the field. He made it clear to the officials I wasn't challenging the call. I was trying to get a timeout. So Miller stepped out of bounds at the four yard line. That's where they'll spot it. It's third down and we'll call it three for San Francisco inside the five. Vernon Davis right here the guy you want to watch for in this situation. Right through the hands of Braylon Edwards. Of course, Edwards early in his career got the reputation of a guy who dropped a lot of passes. Hey, he's got the size and the athleticism, just a little quasi pick route there. Of course, we don't call it a pick, we call it an avoid route. Had to throw it high outside shoulder. Nice safe throw. Got to rely on your receiver to come up with that one. Very catchable ball. So this will be a 22 yard field goal attempt by Akers 0 for 2 today one blocked the other wide right after just two misses all year long coming into the game today and this one is bang through the middle and there's a fight out on the field. Three 0 
nothing. 49ers take the lead. Forty Niners, a three nothing lead in the final three minutes and ten seconds to play here in the opening quarter. This December, two of the most storied conferences in college football culminate their season's two epic championship games for the first time in their histories. Fox Sports will bring you back-to-back -back nights. The Pac-12 title game Friday, December the 2nd. The Big Ten championship game is Saturday, December the 3rd. And both games are only on Fox Sports. Huge upset last night in the Pac-10 with Oregon losing to USC. Chris Wells lunges ahead. The ball came loose. They said he was down. Arizona running backs have not lost a fumble so far this season. Well, the question here, when does the ball come out? The ball is definitely, but looks like the elbow was down. I'm sure they're looking up in the booth right now, the 49er coaches, to see if they want to challenge it. Looked like the ball was. That challenge flag's getting worn out here. Boy, look, he threw that almost all the way to the hash. He was serious about this one. Looks like the ball may have come out. You're going to see it right here as he's going down. If the ball starts to move, look, the ball is loose right there. You saw it moving around. Right inside the pile right there. Looks like Navarro Bowman. Right in the middle of all that. Along with Patrick Willis. They normally are on every down. Two elements to this now. Is there a fumble? Looks like it is. You can see it's coming out. And then was there clear recovery? Both elements obviously have to be true. And it looks like here you got two uh, two uh, Ohio State guys, one fumbling and one recovering the fumble. This is clearly going to be the 49ers ball. Patrick, Patrick Willis was the one who stripped it away from Chris Wells. And Dante Whitner there to cover it up. If the play stands, Arizona has the ball. Second and six from a 24 if it's reversed. 49er football. Already with a 3 0 lead, and we continue to wait on Pete Morelli. Boy, Arizona just, just dodging bullets well, right after now. After reviewing the play, it is a fumble, and San Francisco has recovered. The ball will be placed on the 26 yard line. He set the game for off the 3 0 5. San Francisco will not be charged a timeout. 305. Second turnover today forced by San Francisco. A league high 23 of them forced this year. If somehow Arizona can hold them to just a field goal here. Four opportunities in the red zone to only be down by six. Right now, Skelton's just wondering, geez, just let me get started here. Give me an opportunity to make some plays. Arizona can actually work this to their advantage if they can just burr up defensively weather the storm they're on the road the first quarter San Francisco has been down here the whole game right now they're only sitting with three they can hold them to three here It'd be a huge win for Arizona early in the game. First loss fumble by a Cardinal running back in nearly 230 touches this year. What a throw. Did he get both feet in? No, he did not. He got one in, but not a second. This is a pretty good throw. You're going to see just a little wheel route coming out of the backfield. He's then going to go vertical down the sideline. The thing's just wide enough. Right foot, left foot out of bounds. That was almost perfect, but clearly out of bounds. You know my saying, 
No pass in the history of the NFL has ever been caught out of bounds. That's one of them. Nice throw and catch though. You were the first guy that said that a long time ago. <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Little unbalanced line by the 49ers here on the right side. Score for maybe a half a yard. So here's what you talked about a moment ago. Arizona trying to stand tall defensively after their second turnover of the game. 49ers have a third and nine. And they can feel good about themselves indeed if they can hold the 49ers here. And, and you talk about it all the time. The emotional ability on the road to weather the storm. They can feel very good about themselves if they can contain them here. Coming, they pick it up. Well, that no chance from the beginning. So three and out. Field goal unit comes onto the field for a lengthy field goal try again. Probably had to get the ball up a little quicker than he wanted to. Good protection, but saw that the pressure was coming. There was nothing there going to Braylon Edwards. Safety over the top. Nice job by the Arizona Cardinal defense. They are answering the bell right now. If they can indeed. Hold up this way. They've got to feel good about themselves, all but being down by three or six, depending upon what happens here. Will be a 43 yard field goal try by Akers, and he just does sneak it in the right upright. Three points to any field goal snap. Hold and kick. Any one of the three can throw you off. We already seen Fred Aker struggling a little bit, but you know this veteran was going to get his swing back and not be an issue later on. But that was awful close. <laughs> well, the Chris Wells fumble. It hurts, but it could have been a lot worse. And that's been a little bit of an issue for, for Beanie Wells in terms of the ball getting coughed up. Ken Wisnut would love to develop a solid consistent running game They're They're in the latter half of the league. I think they're 26 coming into the game in rushing so much of what they want to do is dependent upon a good running attack and particularly today when you've got a young quarterback like Skelton that could benefit so much off the play action fake once you get the running game established. Of course Arizona made the big deal. To bring in Kevin Cobb to be their quarterback. Started the first seven games of the year. Injured his foot. Also a turf toe injury that was suffered in Baltimore. Has not played now the last three games. But Cobb was having a very mediocre year to begin with. Stevens Howling brings it out of the end zone. And it's corralled at the 19 yard line. Blake Costanzo, one of their special team standouts. Thursday, a Fox NFL Thanksgiving special. The still unbeaten Green Bay Packers, now 10 0, go to Detroit to continue their run at a perfect season. Coverage begins 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific on Thanksgiving Day with a Fox NFL pregame show on site from Ford Field. The Lions getting a much needed win, 49-35 against Carolina. Right back in the hands of Chris Wells, and he's up to the 24-yard line. Of course, not only did the Cardinals make the trade for Cobb, he had not played a snap for him, and they gave him a king's ransom of money. But they still have a decision to make at the end of the season because they can step away from that, a little bit of that obligation. They have a commitment to make at the end of the season. If indeed Skelton can continue along and look good, it may lead to a very interesting decision at the end of the year. Wide receiver screen, and Navarro Bowman is right there. You know, Willis gets all the pub, but there are some that will tell you there is not a linebacker in the league, there's not a linebacker on his own team having a better season than Navarro Bowman. 
and Patrick Willis will tell you that. And you can watch him just coming up into here to make the hit. These two are one of the better tandems in the league. And you know what? They're almost identical twins. They're physical, they react very quickly. They're playing together as a tandem as well as any combination in the league. Skelton dropped the ball, picks it back up, and sacked it to 15. Here you can see two on one, a guy low and a guy high on Larry Fitzgerald, going to limit the opportunities. And then Skelton, he's starting to move around. This is where big plays can come, but his foot comes out from underneath. And we said that this turf was a little loose. It's a little bit wet, obviously known for that here in the old candlestick park. I still call it candlestick. I'm old enough I remember that. And then loses the ball coming out. This is a big man, Skelton is. Coming out of college, a lot of people felt like he was uh, they they equated to him we got a guy down here well, it's Brandon Keith he's yeah. left a number of games this season a troublesome knee came out last week against Philadelphia came back into the game after leaving for a short while but Jeremy Bridges has had to replace him in four games already this season getting back to Skelton a lot of people equated him to Joe Flacco coming out small school Fordham just like Flacco came out of Delaware big man he's actually much bigger than Flacco he's 6'6 six, six, he's 240 plus has the ability to kind of shrug off coverage in a Roethlisberger style of way and the thing you keep hearing coaches talk about this guy there, there's no uh, lack of aggression this guy he's willing to put it up right now they're just having a tough time as you saw earlier on that play they're going to double and triple uh, Larry Fitzgerald and see what uh, you know is there someone else that can step up in that void when you take away Larry Fitzgerald. Final seconds take away from the opening quarter six nothing 49ers Fox NFL Sunday continues after this. Well they're taking a look at the throwing right hand of Arizona quarterback John Skelton. There's the Cardinals punt and it's down at the 49er 39 yard line. Taking a look at his pinky it appears yep. This happened earlier in the game this was just recently here but you can see right there he hits it just on the helmet or the shoulder pad of the incoming rush and right there. Or when he came down I don't know if that it exacerbated it here or whether it was just that first one but landing on that right hand as the ball came down. Well they're not throwing the football much like they did against the Giants early in the game coming into this one completed to Vernon Davis for a gain of almost five and and here you mentioned earlier you know Arizona's already turned the ball over twice their quarterback doesn't have a single passing yard but they're only down six nothing and Arizona's got to feel very good about that on the road they just got to muster a little bit more of a running game Skelton's going to have a tough time you've seen them doubling Larry Fitzgerald if this gets into a 40 throw game that's not going to bode well for Arizona they've got to get the running game cranked up. Gore. Very close to a first down, needed to get to the 49 yard line. And that's right where they are going to mark it. If not, it is a first down. In the game against the Giants last Sunday, the win right here. 49ers threw the ball 30 times and ran it 20 times and they marked that ball about a half a yard short of the first down one official signal first down and was overruled on the spot by another they didn't need much he didn't get much I'm talking to the 49ers on Friday looks like they they obviously pushed for the first down here. 
But in talking to 49ers and Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, he was stunned by how much the New York Giants were willing to shove extra guys into the box to stop the run. And this is something they're anticipating, that more and more people are just going to throw bodies down into the box, almost daring them to throw. And I think we can see here a little bit of an indication of that of, OK, if we've got to throw the ball more than run it, we're willing to do that. Empty backfield, Gore's put out far to the left. They open it up on a crossing pattern. And the Scottsdale, Arizona native out of Chaparral High, Kyle Williams on the reception, another first down. Just a nice little crossing route here. Alex Smith is very comfortable in the gun. You got to remember coming out of Utah, Urban Meyer was his coach, operated almost exclusively out of the gun is very comfortable with the empty. He's very comfortable even though that's not their M.O. right now in getting into a throw throw game if that's what they want to do. Gore breaks a couple of tackles. Gore coming into the game needed 149 rushing yards to pass Joe Perry. For number one all time in 49er history three weeks ago. He leapfrogged Roger Craig for number two. I love the body lean of Frank Gore. I talked earlier about as a play caller you love a guy like this. He never leaves you short. You're always going to get positive yards. Coaches around the league love Frank Gore. Gore bounces off one tackle but. Is short of a first down. It'll bring up third down and a yard. This is a classic 49er game right now. You can see the time of possession, but again, time of possession now, you got to be careful. Possession without points is like empty calories in, in, a, in a diet. You've got to come up with the points, and typically they do. They have not yet as such in this game, but they've been in plenty of scoring opportunity. Play faking. Everybody bit on the run, and they're laying off to Crabtree, and that's the first down of the 17-yard line. Well, you can't design it any better than that. This is a well-designed play. Watch what Crabtree does. He's going to come in motion. Then you make the play fake. And now everybody's flowing that way right there. You see the play fake, and he just kind of sneaks out. This guy wants to crash on the back end to make the run, and all of a sudden you get a Michael Crabtree out in space. Well-designed play by Jim Harbaugh, Greg Roman, their offensive coordinator. Outstanding protection here. Alex Smith needed just a little bit more air, a little turn route by Crabtree. Again, anytime you throw flat in the red zone, it just doesn't give you enough time to react. He needed just a bit more air, let Crabtree run underneath it. He was wide open, rushed it just a little bit. Second and ten. Crab three for a gain of close to five. It'll bring up third down. Adams on the coverage and the tackle. I'm a little surprised with what we're seeing out of the 49ers here in the red zone. We've seen the Wildcat. We've seen a lot of gun. We've seen some empty. This is not their normal M.O., particularly down the red zone. They're one of the top committed run teams in the league. Normally you get down here, I'm going to pound, pound, play action fake. They, they're just getting a little cute right now, and it surprises me. Incomplete and another field goal try. I just, as I just said, and that, that's not a bad play call here. They got an inverted bone. 
Uh, you can see here again so often when you play this formula play good defense run the ball field position efficiency in the red zone and as I'll say it again it's not just scoring touchdowns it's it's getting points in the red zone they have been good about not turning it over but at some point now those touchdowns need to show up and for as many times as they've been in the red zone they're coming away with nothing and now this one gets blocked. Patrick Peterson coming off the edge. Wow. Two missed field goals all year long. They have three misses, including blocks, today. Just a 6 nothing lead for the 49ers. As John Skelton is okay and back in at quarterback. For Arizona, after they looked at his right pinky following the last series, Bells is Wells tripped up and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. A lot of elements to this. Patrick Peterson coming off the edge. This guy's got great quickness. Drops the shoulder, gets a hand on it. But it was also a bad snap, a low snap. A lot of elements go into this. We said earlier, what? Snap, hold, and kick right there. Nice job of Lee. Regrouping it and Harbaugh recognized, boy, man, this is just not happening right now. We've been down here way too many times to be only sitting here with six points. Out of the backfield, Reagan Mauia on the reception. Those are the first passing yards in this game for Skelton. Let's send it down the road to Los Angeles and check in with Kurt Menefee. And the first passing touchdown for Tavares Jackson since week five. This hookup with Sidney Rice for 14 yards ties the game with the Rams. Seven apiece in that other NFC West battle. Tom and Bryant. All right, Craig, thank you very much. Arizona gets its first first down of the game. Bridges in at right tackle for the injured Brandon Keith. He took a blow to the head, and his return is questionable. Threw it behind a wide open receiver. And it has been a very sluggish start here today for John Skelt. Poor decisions throwing into heavy traffic. And when he's had receivers open, rare albeit, he's missed a couple of them. Well, he's pushing the ball. He's not really whipping it. He's just kind of pushing the ball tentative about where he's going. Ball actually got tipped there a little bit. Almost a great catch by Larry Fitzgerald. Delay to Wells and he's met head on by Navarro Bowman. This is what I was talking about earlier Tom San Francisco's ability to stuff the run with just their standard seven man front gives you the back end here you can just see they got they don't they're not not numbering people down they're not bringing the safety down they're just handling with the seven man front what that allows you to do on the back end in the secondary particularly with a young developing quarterback. You can give him a lot of confusing looks when you don't have to commit your safeties to stop the run. Incomplete on third down and eight for the 49ers. Hope to get the football back with 7 12 to play until halftime. Skelton is hit on just two out of nine for 12 yards and an interception. up to get it from the blue as he leveled at the 30 yard line by Stuart Bradley. Mercy, mercy, what a hit there on Ginn Jr. First down. All the way back at the Time line out. of scrimmage, buried in all that traffic was a penalty flag. 49ers have the football when we come back. A field goal try on each of the first five possessions for the 49ers. Normally, that's very good news. Kind of year David Akers is having. But two of his field goals have been blocked. He's missed once. Connected successfully twice. 
And this has certainly been a rather sluggish start for the 8-1 49ers. Scores slow down after breaking into the secondary, but that's a gain of 12 on first down for Frank Gore. And a sluggish start for the 49ers. Here you can see tip balls, balls that are thrown just a little overthrown, not real sharp by Alex Smith. Certainly not just him, a drop ball there by Braylon Edwards, a missed opportunity for a red zone touchdown. Two of the throws down into there just lack the sharpness that you need coming into a game, a divisional game like this. Burrow finds just the slightest seam and slips through it up to the 30 yard line, a gain of four. And in all fairness, although the sun is peeking out from a dark, cloudy day for the first time in a rainbow just outside of Candlestick Park, it's been a very slick turf and it's been raining the entire day. And everybody will talk about, well, with the 49ers overlooking Arizona, is this a trap game? You don't come into an NFL game with absolutely squinty eyed, narrow focus. It's real easy for the game to just get that tip away, that missed pass down the field, and all of a sudden you're sitting here 6 0, even though we've been down in the red zone five separate times. Good move after the catch by Williams, and he's up to the 41 yard line. Put a juke there on Sam Macho, the rookie out of Texas, and got an additional five. It's a nice open field play. The hallmark of a good defensive team is the ability to make open field tackles. The 49ers certain that's a big part of their ability defensively. Arizona still developing, as we said, with this group of rookies and second-year players. Gore sits and watches while Kendall Hunter takes a handoff and he's up to the 46 yard line a good pickup by Hunter. They're excited about his future Kendall Hunter just as in second year out of Mississippi State. Yeah and he's been a good compliment to Gore you can see here for a rookie very good pass protector known primarily or thought he'd be just a third down back different than Gore Gore's between the tackles this guy gets in and out of his breaks very quickly very quick outside the defense as well. Smith looking around, dumps it off to the second year back out of Oklahoma State, and he has a first down to the 38 yard line. Well, that's the surprise when you get a young player like Kendall Hunter. Obviously as we said a third down back a guy that can help you out of the backfield as you can see here But you can't put a guy in this situation unless he's also a good pass protector And the coaches tell us that they've been shocked at how quickly he has picked up the pro protection scheme coming out of the college game So Hunter out four back in and Smith to throw it and looking for Davis Just a step long and a bring up Second down and 10, and we set it down to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for a game break. Chargers have dropped four straight pairs of one. Four in a row, Marlon Barber trying to keep both those stats going. One yard touchdown run, put the Bears up by a touchdown. 10 3 late in the second quarter. Tom Bryan and Moore. Kurt, thank you. We saw Chicago last week. Not many people talking about them, Brian, but they have a look of a team that's thinking about the playoffs as well. Quietly confident as they continue to work that formula of playing good defense, run the ball, not making the mistakes out of Jay Cutler that we had seen earlier in the year. Boy, still has that burst. Breaks two tackles. First by Wilson, then by Peterson. And picks up a first down. Well, they're going to mark it, but he stepped out of bounds. I beg your pardon, at the 30, so he's a yard short. I, I got a man crush on Frank Gore. Now, look at this. Just that little jump cut that goes to the outside. What did I just say? Frank Gore is a great between-the-tackle runner, but then all of a sudden can bounce outside and give you a run like that. Well, they hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Hey, every time they have brought in two extra offensive linemen in this game, 
They have been completely stuffed at the line of scrimmage, and they were again here on third down in a yard. Right combination of bringing in Alex Boone and then Shiloh Rochelle. Jim Harbaugh, there, Arizona. And Jim Harbaugh has a decision here. You know, the way this game's going, you've been struggling with your field goal game. Do we go for it here? I'm not so sure again that you don't go ahead and take a shot here. Your defense has been holding up well. Arizona hasn't been able to move the ball so far. I'm not sure he doesn't think about going for it here. Well, he's going to think about it because he's going to let the play clock wind down and call a timeout. Fourth and two. Decision time for the first year head coach. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they still know what they want to do right now. They're sending the offense back in on the field. I'm not sure we don't see some type of play action pass here or maybe getting Alex Smith outside the perimeter of the defense. All right, so here they go. Need to get to the 29. Sprint pass to the right. And again, it's Kyle Williams. Who grew up, as we mentioned earlier, in Scottsdale, Arizona, just outside of Phoenix. Went to Chaparral High. He's becoming a bigger part of this offense. Classic 49er West Coast play. A quick sprint to the right with a little out above the quick flat. Read shallow to deep. Nice throw on the run by Alex Smith. We have reached the two-minute warning. 49er drive started from their own 14, nine plays, 67 yards. And a fourth down conversion. Play fake to Gore. Had something set up the other way to Delaney Walker, and it was just thrown into the ground by Smith. Let's go back and watch Jim Harbaugh on his fourth down. And this is life in the NFL for a head coach. A gutsy call on fourth down. Did I get the right thing? Are we doing the right thing? Oh, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, oh, that's not going to work. What did I do? Why did I call that? Oh, yeah. Whew. Dodge the bullet. I love it. All right, a little, watch this little fist pump. Good. All right, guys. Dodge the bullet there. Now let's get the next call in. Would that be called straight front run in there? Oh, <laughs> my gosh. He was second guessing himself about four times right up to the point it was completed. Adrian Wilson coming up to make the stop of Gore. A yard behind the line of scrimmage, so now third down and 11. So Arizona spends the timeout this time, 147 to play, and a big third down coming up. Third down and 11 for San Francisco. Game totally dominated by the 49ers in every statistical category. Yeah, the Cardinals trying to make another big stop and force another field goal try. Davis. And he appears to be about a yard short of the first down. That's a nice tackle by Michael Adams. Does Jim Harbaugh go for it on fourth down again? Well, why wouldn't you? If you did it further out and you were within field goal range, why, why would you not go for it again here? They are. Where are they? Alex Smith looking to the sideline, and now the field goal unit will be sent to the field. Yeah, I, that, that one, I'm not quite clear why, if, if you're willing to, and you were within field goal range. It's not like they were uh, too far to, it was a risky field goal. I don't disagree with taking the points here because now you go beyond the one score differential. Timeout called on the field by the 49ers, their final of the first half. Well, the only other time that David Akers has had two field goals blocked in a game was in December of 08 against the Giants. He's had two of them blocked here today, and he's missed one. One block by Calais Campbell, the other by Patrick Peterson. And if that was the concern of Jim Harbaugh, because they were a little further out, clearly within range of Akers, no question. Going forward on fourth down, if it's because of the mishaps in the kicking game earlier, like I said earlier, 
I don't disagree with kicking the field goal here because it's always about scoring differential. If they make this, it's nine to nothing. That's a two score game now. That's huge with an offense we just saw that only has 28 yards, right? In total offense. So I don't disagree with the decision here, uh, the way the kicking game's gone. But if you if you went for it on fourth and two back there, why not go for it here? Will be a 29 yard field goal try by David Akers, and this one is right down the middle to make it 9 0. But Brian Billick, we continue to go back to something you brought up when it was a 3 0 game. 49ers average 26 points per game. They may not be the Green Bay Packers on offense, but they've been getting better and better as this season goes on. And for the Arizona Cardinals to have been dominated the way they've been dominated, Yet only down nine nothing in the first half. Is that something that Ken Wisenhut can then hang his hat on at halftime? Absolutely. It's good news, bad news. It's guys, the good news is look how we've weathered this storm. Look like look how you've held up under the pressure. They've been down there a million times. We've only given up nine points. The bad news is, guys, we got we gotta get something going here offensively. We've got to find some formula. Let's get Skilton outside of the protection, outside of the defensive scheme. Let's start throwing some screens. Let's go no huddle. Let's find something, because whatever we're doing, we're getting no offensive output right now. Fitzgerald has had some of his biggest games of his in outfield career against the 49ers. One catch, no game. And Larry Fitzgerald was a ball boy for us years ago when I was in Minnesota. This is an outstanding young man. There's some great receivers in this league Andre Johnson, Calvin Johnson. For my money, now I'm biased. I still think Larry Fitzgerald's the best in the league. His frustration's got to be high. He goes from Kurt Warner and all that that represented in that passing game to a string of quarterback play now over the last couple of years. It's very frustrating. Steven Talon brings it up to the 21 yard line. We're 51 seconds away from the Visa halftime report. What's coming up, Kurt? All right, we'll get back to work because coming up soon on the Visa halftime, we'll have all the scores and highlights from week 11 including a thrilling overtime win for the Cowboys at Washington and the Packers staying perfect against the Bucks. It all comes your way in just a bit on the Visa Halftime. Back to you. Jimmy looked a little more relaxed there than Jim Harbaugh does on the sideline. I think folks can see why Jimmy and I enjoy doing this compared to what these guys go through on the sideline. That's by far the best completed pass of the afternoon by Skelton. This one to early Doucette, who's having the best season of his very young career. And you can see here the fact that Arizona's huddling up with Skelton, a little bit of an extension of the fact that they're not quite yet comfortable letting him run what would typically be a no huddle situation here. They want a more orchestrated call out of the huddle. Doucette took a lick from Chris Culliver. Third round pick out of South Carolina, getting more and more playing time. Nice hit coming from the outside. Now they get into the no huddle. They're getting closer into scoring range, letting Skelton use more of the entire offense. Well, we got a wide open receiver all the way down at the 25 yard line early. Doucette and Skelton did not see him. And then tried to get to him late, where it wasn't uh, all of a sudden now the coverage reacted to it rather than taking the sure yardage underneath. They're, they're about uh, 30 yards. They're, they've got plenty of time. They've got two timeouts. They can use those timeouts here. So they can hand the ball off, they can throw it in the middle of the field, and you, he's got the complete playbook at his disposal now. He does not have to keep this thing outside near the sideline. It's rid of the football and it's incomplete. So after having a little bit of hope of getting into a field goal try, the punt. This is what we're talking about the whole game. Fitzgerald always having two guys over the top of them. One on the line of scrimmage, one down the field. They are not going to let Larry Fitzgerald be the one to get Arizona back into this ballgame. 
Well, you would assume they're not even going to let Ginn have a chance to return this putt. But we have seen stranger things. Angle to the sideline. And beautifully dropped inside the five. That will end the first half. So the Cardinals looking for answers, but they're only down nine and nothing. Fox NFL Sunday continues with the Visa halftime report coming up. There you see the numbers, 250 yards for the 49ers against just 52 for the Cardinals. Arizona's turned it over twice. The three field goals by Akers, the only scoring for the Niners. And Ginn will bring it out. And not a wise decision as he is slammed down to the 17-yard line. And let's check in down along the sideline once again with Laura Oakman. Laura? Tom, both coaches praising their defense, saying they're playing lights out offensively, a whole different matter. Ken Wisenhunt saying we are not getting good play of our quarterback. We are going to take him inside and calm him down. There's plays underneath to be made. Larry Fitzgerald, one catch, not acceptable. We're going to continue to move him around, get him involved. As for Jim Harbaugh, he said we are going to knuckle down and reset this half. That means no penalties on special teams and finish drives. All right, Laura, thank you very much. And we thank both head coaches for taking the time to visit with us here on Fox Sports. Four on first down, nowhere to run. I think we're likely to see the 49ers <clears throat> calm down a little bit as well. We talked about Arizona and their young quarterback calming down. They were doing a lot of things in the first half. I'd like to see San Francisco get back to their more traditional formations. Uh, Arizona's playing pretty well, but obviously with the score the way it is right now, let's go ahead and push and shove the ball a little bit and then play action fake off that. We haven't seen any real attempts down the field by the 49ers. Throw it on second down. And Crabtree. Slip pass a tackle, breaks through a second and a third, still on his feet. And finally caught from behind, hustling all the way down the field was Campbell to catch him at the 48-yard line. Well, they bring Crabtree in motion because that keeps a corner from getting his hands on him, on him early. And this guy's very good in the open field. This one-on-one -on -one combination with the secondaries against Patrick Peterson here. Nice matchup of great athletes. And then his ability, his run after the catch. This is still a developing wide receiver is Michael Crabtree that's still learning what it is to be a full professional. Gore turns ahead for a gain of call it three yards. Gore closing in on 70 yards rushing. We told you coming in he needed 149 to become the 49ers all time leading runner. And Frank Gore's ability to keep you in that positive down and distance. Nice to see Michael Crabtree involved. We haven't seen a whole lot of Vernon Davis. They've tried early. If they're going to continue to throw the ball, I imagine he's going to be an aiming point for Alex Smith as we go forward. They just isolate Crabtree out there. I tell you what, Crabtree is wearing out Patrick Peterson today. No big, big gainers, but those two have been locked up on one another throughout the day. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at all the numbers here, right here. All these folks, this is eight in the box. This is a hard run formation. So I'm not sure this isn't what we call a smoke route. It's a called run, but I saw one-on-one -on -one outside. I'm gonna give Michael Crabtree a chance to school the young Patrick Peterson. That's not a called play. It's just something between the quarterback and the receiver. Six receptions for 111 yards for Crabtree. By far his best game this season. That one dumped off the Gore out of the backfield. A gain of six on first down. Crabtree only had 335 receiving yards this entire season. His third 100-yard receiving game. Of course, he was one of the most decorated college-wide receivers in the history of college football. Had that contract and a lengthy holdout his rookie year. Came back last year with 48 catches and then trying to get it rolling after 
A broken foot during the offseason. And we're, we're going to get this kind of matchup with Crabtree. We're seeing more and more creative personnel and formations by the 49ers. We saw three tight ends in that last formation. We saw what that does to Arizona. It crowds everybody in the box. We talked about the New York Giants last week. Put eight and nine people in that box. It's going to give them opportunities to get those one on one matchups down the field. Alex Smith's got to take advantage of it when he gets it. Three tight ends into the game again to try and pick up on third and short, and Boyd does to the 25 yard line. This is just man on man here. Look, look at the body, the body lean. Look at that head on hit by Gore. I, just, I can't, I keep coming back to this. His body lean, his ability to get positive yards, particularly in a situation like this. Yet we've seen also the athleticism, the jump cuts that go sideways. The one thing they haven't done with Frank Gore that he has done in years past is get more balls out of the backfield in the passing game. That's the next level for the 49ers. I think they could get him more involved with the passing game. <coughs> Excuse me, coming out of the backfield. Well, they bring out the chain. It looked like Gore had it, but he's that much short. So, another. Well, I, he, he got more than he got there than gave than he got there but boy the, the spot of it looks like where the knee is down. I don't know that you challenge this. They always tell you don't don't challenge these spots because it's so hard to get a definitive angle and you lose the challenge unless indeed you convert on the first down and they're going for it. Why not. We saw that in the in the end of the half in this virtually the same situation not anywhere near. The length is fourth and inches. Last time they were in this situation, third down, they just pulled it back, sneaked it. Cool. Whole mass of bodies around there. We'll have to wait and see where they spot it. If it's where that official is standing, right there, parallel, it's enough. Yep. Just simple football downhill here again. Look at the body lean, the drive of the legs. And not official, but Alex Smith saying we got the first down. An injured 49er down on the play. So we'll find out who that is in the middle of all those 49er bodies. We'll tell you about it when we come back. One of the two number one picks that started along the offensive line for the 49ers from last year, Anthony Davis. Starting right tackle being looked at on the 49ers sideline. Alex Boone replaces him. On the first down, they give it to Gore, and he's to the 23 yard line. Well, the 49ers, I, I talked earlier about wanting to see them get into more of their traditional two and three tight end get downhill. They're doing that. And Progressively Arizona is now having to stack that box in this could be an opportunity to give them that same personnel grouping get a play fake downhill and then take a shot to the end zone. Couple of yards. It'll bring up third down for the 49ers. We stop the clock at 9:05 to play, and they're wrapping up that right ankle. When guys are that big, it takes a lot of tape to wrap up even an ankle. And an ankle injury on these big linemen now—that is a serious deal. Because you're exactly right. That's a lot of weight on those ankles, and it's not something you can just gingerly come back from. That's a good 340 or 50 pounds. And those skinny ankles. Smith is going to run it. 
A first down as he dives forward inside the 10 yard line. He did a lot of that back in his college days at Utah playing for Urban Meyer. And we saw it in the New York game last week the same way. When things kind of clear out, he's looking down. Everybody turns their back in man coverage. They're following. He's turning. And now he can turn it and get down the field. Like you said, this is not foreign territory for Alex Smith coming out of that spread offense in Utah. Didn't make a living of it, not Tebow-esque. I wouldn't put him in that category, but he made some good yards with the youth running the ball. Anthony Davis, by the way, has come back in at right tackle. Gore for a yard. Well, speaking of before the second down, are your thoughts on Tim Tebow? Obviously, he's gone to four and one since taking over as a starter for the Denver Broncos. What a great story. It is, and I get asked about it on a weekly basis. I'm done a Apologizing for critiquing Tim Tebow because you almost feel like you have to apologize. He's such a great kid. He's such a great story. But then you're going to make the observation: Can they win? Can they do this? Can they do that? It kind of—I know it's wearing him out because it's wearing me out. Touchdown, Kyle Williams. His hometown team from Chaparral High School in Scottsdale, Arizona. Of course, his father, Kenny Williams, a general manager of the Chicago White Sox. Nice little pivot move against Marshall, then just sprinting to the pylon. He's able to get the ball over the goal line. Nice touch by Alex Smith. We talked earlier about the ball being a little flat. He gave it just enough room. For Williams to get to the outside, the ball breaks the plane. Nice throw and catch. For the first time today that either team finds the end zone. Point after is good. Drive started at the 16, capped off on a touchdown throw to Kyle Williams. Alex Smith 13 plays 84 yards chewing up nearly eight minutes of clock and they find the end zone for the first time in the game Smith doing it in the air and a big third down conversion running the ball. Well they don't like the turn but he managed that drive very very well didn't have to make any big plays down the field converted on a couple third downs come away with the seven points. Stevens howling deep in his own end zone going to bring it out. And he crosses a 20 up to the 21. 49ers have been bludgeoning opponents so far this year. Adam Snyder and the Niners in front 16 0. First down, Cardinals from their own 22 yard line, trailing 16 0, but a long way to go. And Skelton has brought him back the last two weeks. And he finds his main man across the middle, and that'll be a gain of 18 yards. And for Larry Fitzgerald, that puts him over 9,000 well, career gonna get, yards. If you're going to get these high-low coverages, this is the way to break it. you got to bring them across the field. Get the in-breaking routes. Hope that the linebackers don't get the depth to cut it off. Skelton, like you said earlier, Larry Fitzgerald's going to draw the coverage. One of these other receivers has got to step up and give Skelton some options to go to these other guys as they continue to double up on Fitzgerald. More poorly thrown, and it's intercepted by Dante Whitner. And he's run out of bounds at the 37 yard line. Skelton's just, you know, it's all about Larry Fitzgerald. I understand because he's as good as there is in the league. But this, this is a dead play. He comes out of it, he's underneath. He's got Witten over the top of it, and it's a bad throw. There was no place to go with that ball. He's just counting on Larry Fitzgerald, I guess, to go up and take it away from someone. Right now, I don't know if he, he's not hearing the play. He's not clear what the play is, but whatever it was, that 
I'm not sure it came in that way. And now the 49ers trying to officially bust this one wide open. Smith rolling, rolling, good rock by Williams, and that's another catch. Talking about a young man who had receptions in each of the last two games. After Joshua Morgan went down with an injury, they're looking for a third receiver to get some things done in this 49er offense, and they may have found their guy in Kyle Williams. And they really don't have, Alex Smith doesn't have that definitive go-to guy. He's got two what Greg Roman, their offensive coordinator, called elite tight ends in Delaney Walker and in Davis. But at the wide receiving court, it is a group effort. For a gain of eight. You can get coverage of every NFL game with NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL right now. All Star Star Frank Gore anytime you want. This guy's, uh, again, I just love to see the way he bounced outside. That's twice now we've seen him go inside. Those quick feet, step sideways, get outside the perimeter of the defense. We're trying to out of that total. Nowhere to go that time. Third down coming up. And let's go down to Los Angeles to Curtin Menifee. San Diego and Chicago. Phillip Rivers hooking up with Vincent Jackson many times today. Six catches, 148 yards for Jackson. But that touchdown evens the score at 17 apiece. And that's the one that matters the most. Tom, Coach, and Laura. All right, thank you very much, Kurt. This game in every category statistically overwhelmingly in favor of the 49ers. Third down and two. The throw it out of his formation. And a touchdown to Vernon Davis. Fifth receiving touchdown of the year for Davis, who over the last four seasons has more receiving touchdowns than any tight end in the NFL. And that sets a new record. He shared the mark with Brett Jones. They just get him on the edge, and now you're getting one on one with Johnson on the outside, a safety. That's a matchup you don't want. The speed and athleticism of Davis, the formation, a heavy run formation, gave him the opportunity to isolate him on a safety. Two possessions, two touchdowns for the 49ers who are trying to rip off their eighth consecutive win. Touchdown reception by Vernon Davis. Working off a short field following the interception and the big return by Whitner. That's the best kick of the day by Akers. Four Niners lead it. 23 nothing. There are 49er touchdowns to begin the second half, and a 9 nothing game has turned into a 23 nothing affair. Out of the backfield. Good clean hit on a gain of close to 10 yards. But boy, running the football against this Vic Fangio defense. Just doing anything against this 49er defense. 15 points allowed per game. We told you they lead the NFL in takeaways. Red zone defense. They've not allowed a 100-yard rusher. Longest running streak in the NFL the last 31 games. That's incomplete. Second down coming up. Third down. Vic Fangio is one of the best coaches, and these numbers are going to do nothing but move up. His ranking is going to go even higher. And he's the perfect complement to what Jim Harbaugh wants 
out of this 49er team in terms of the mentality given the talent that they have. This ability with just a four-man rush, stop the run with the seven-man box. Andre Roberts streaks down the sideline and shoved out of bounds. Biggest gain of the afternoon for the Arizona Cardinals puts him down at the 25. And you can see they're talking here. They just had a, a, a mistake here. I don't know who it was, but someone didn't keep the leverage on the outside. Whether it was Culliver here or whether D Dante Whitner, one of the two needed to be to the outside. Yeah, <laughs> Vic right now is going, that's not the way we designed this thing. Well, he's not happy. No, I've seen that look far too many times. Vic Ford worked for me in ba Baltimore. I've seen and heard that a time or two. Incomplete. And the thing I appreciated about Vic was that there's a saying that's been coaching for a long time. There's two type of players I can't have. Those that can't do what they're told and those that can only do what they're told. Uh, you got to have a certain ability to adapt on the run. His defense is dictate that you just have good, smart ball players. That if it breaks down a certain way, you know where the vulnerabilities are in the defense, just cover it. Intercepted. Deshaun Goldson, his second pick of the year. And another 49er takeaway. Skelton's just throwing stuff up now. And I wish I had a better answer for it. You can see here, again, Larry Fitzgerald, this is the guy you got to go to. Underneath coverage, linebackers underneath, just a bad throw. You know, when we talked with Vic Fangio, I asked, are you going to do some things to change up coverages? to try to confuse the young quarterback. He says, I don't think we need to, because all he does is stare down Larry Fitzgerald. So we could disguise coverages, but he's not reading them anyway. Well, you know the fickle world of fans and quarterbacks. You know, a guy comes off the bench in relief of Kevin Cobb and wins you a couple of games in dramatic fashion in the fourth quarter, first against St. Louis. And then last week was shocker in Philadelphia. Smith lays it off the penalty all the way back to the nine yard line. More times than not, it means holding on the offense. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face. Number 75, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. We'll get back to that in a minute, Brian. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Well, the Bears have retaken the lead against San Diego. Jay Cutler. Hooking up with Johnny Knox, 42 yards on the reception. He's down at the one, but that's okay. Cutler ran it in on a quarterback sneak two plays later, and the Bears have a touchdown lead, 24-17, late in the third. Tom and Coach? Good one there at Soldier Field, but, you know, getting back to Skelton for a minute. I love the, the line of Kent Summers, a writer there in Arizona at the Arizona Republic. He said he's shown you enough promise to get you excited. He struggled enough to make you wonder. That goes back to those saying, son, your potential is going to get me fired. You ever lay that on a player that line? Oh, absolutely. And, and, you, and you're exactly right. You know, Kevin Cobb, and I like Kevin Cobb as a quarterback. I think he's got a future. But the team is struggling as a whole. Skelton comes in. They get a couple wins. It's not like he lit it up. The guy was still in their 50%. But he did bring them back on a, on a couple nice throws, finish off the drive. But... The quarterback dilemma for this Arizona team over the last two years is, is something that's going to have to be addressed. Grab three on the slant up to the 22 yard line. It'll bring up third down and seven. Well, Cobb just started it to, to gingerly, was the word he used, participate in practice during the week. And you wonder if he might be ready to go next week. And he's anxious to get out there. This this is a coach's son. This is a guy that loves to play ball. He's not enjoying sitting on the sideline even in a game like this, I promise you. Yeah. 
Well, that looked like a pretty good throw. On the run to Vernon Davis, but broken up. So the 49ers will punt it. The athleticism of, of Alex Smith again here, movement in the pocket, the ability to throw on the run. I'll be very careful here when I bring up the name Aaron Rodgers in comparison with Alex Smith, but remember now, Aaron Rodgers supposedly fell down in the draft because of a lack of athleticism. Alex Smith was a very athletic quarterback coming out of out of college, and he showed that kind of promise when he was the number one pick overall. Whoa, we almost got one block. How is it not blocked right there? Hands up, Abdullah. And then penalty flags a little of the field on the return by Peterson at the 31 yard line. I almost wonder if there's a fumble at the bottom of that pile as well. Well, 49er Navarro comes away with a football. And it is 49er football. But remember now, there is a penalty flag down. Been a rough day for Patrick Peterson. During the return, the illegal block in the back, number 20 of the receiving team. Penalty will be declined. First down, San Francisco. Four turnovers in a game, making a fifth now for Arizona. Three interceptions, a fumble by Chris Wells, and now a fumble on the punt return by Peterson. And that was a heck of a kick by Andy Lee. He he is a big part of why the 49ers this this formula of defense run the ball field position. He has been booming some punts and is a big part of why we talk about this field position battle and the fact that the opponents to the 49ers don't have favorable field position that kind of hang time allowed that coverage to get down there and come up with the fumble. First carry of the game by Anthony Dixon. And this is what we're talking about Tom you can see the field position here we talked last week in the New York game that as well as New York played the deepest field position starting position they had was their own 22 and when you play this formula that exchange of you know play good defense force a punt run the ball you may not have to come up with a score but you're constantly approaching and encroaching on the field position. The punt game with Andy Lee is a big part of it as well. They've got all the elements to play that type of game. Crabtree. Looked like pretty good defense here by Peterson, but they're going to throw a flag. His left arm at contact with Crabtree. I don't know how in the world defensive backs are able to play the game anymore Pass to be honest with you. Number 21 defense. Automatic first down. And they'll tell you the same thing here. Look at he's playing the ball. Uh, I, you know, who's pushing who? Crabtree pushing him or is Peterson pushing Crabtree? That's the typical uh, right there they're going to say arm bar. I think the fact that he reached up you can look back and play the ball but if you reach across the body Again, I think this, this is just hand fighting that's going on, but the fact that the hand reached all the way across the body, the official will tell you that that's an arm bar and that's going to get called. A little confusion right now here. Alex Smith's not quite sure what the personnel is. They may have to use a timeout here because this is. Uh, I'd burn a timeout. Let's 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 just do this right. You know, again, uh, you brought it up earlier, Brian. You, you, you know, you're leading 23 to nothing, but here you're bringing in Sopoaga, a defensive tackle, a nose tackle into your backfield. I know they've done it before, so it's not like they're trying stuff they've never done before. But you know, you brought up earlier in the game. There are times when they've had the ball deep in Arizona territory where maybe a little cute. Well, not, I will say this because we asked them about this on on Friday and. If this game continues on the way it's going and obviously now that becomes a 9 and 1 49er team. We're talking about the bigger picture of home field advantage chasing the Packers. Maybe it comes down to uh, you know they could get the number one seed or is the number two seed. They also know that this formula we keep talking about 
it hasn't been tested with the likes of the Green Bay, the New Orleans, a team that you may have to keep up and attract me a little bit more. They need to develop that aspect of their game, not necessarily in the cute fashion that we're talking about, but spreading it out, doing a little bit more empty. Some of the things that we say Alex Smith, it's not that he can't do them. He just hasn't had to do them yet. They need to develop that aspect of the game. This is part of it to a certain degree, but you're right. They, they could be a lot simpler and go ahead and put this thing away. Well, no Sopoaga in the backfield this time. Boy, Smith leveled. That should be a live ball. Or are they saying incomplete pass? They are. Yeah, you can see here, just as you go, this is just, he's trying to just get a, a quick little flare out there. Boy, that, uh, and, and, and it clearly was backwards. Unless the ball got tipped, that should have been a fumble, not a pass. Watch where the ball comes out, and, and whether you call that an incomplete or not, it's going backwards. Yeah, that's, and that's, what, that's what Ken Wisenhunt is arguing right here, that that ball should come back as a fumble. And, and he is challenging bounds. the call on the field. Ken Wisenhunt. Really on the field by Arizona has been challenged of an incomplete pass. It is either, well, you can see right here, it's either a fumble in that it's not a pass because you're saying it's the empty hand, the ball came out, or even if it isn't, that's a backward pass. This is a good challenge. Doesn't matter. That's the point I'm making here is that whether you say that was a full action, if not, okay, it's a fumble. If it is an action, that's a backward pass. That ball should be coming back in terms of the spot. Well, let's see where it goes out of bounds here. You see he released the ball from the 14, and it's going to go out of bounds right about uh, the 25-yard line. I think that's what Ken Wisenhut is saying. Move this thing back to the 25. Yeah, and if I can get them just to settle for another field goal to give me half a chance rather than the touchdown. Jim Harbaugh, as he looks at this, and this will be ruled one way or the other, but right now, because we're still, you know, we're just about to finish out the third quarter. After reviewing quarter. the play, the ruling on the field stands. So well, it's confirmed it is an incomplete pass. Quarterback's arm is going forward. Even though the ball went backwards by rule, that is a forward pass. Second down. They've got and a, a timeout will be charged to Arizona. Someone's got to explain to me how a backward pass, how that is not then ruled to fumble. Well, Mike Pereira, can you help us a little bit from the Fox Command Center about Number why this didn't go Ken Wisenhut's way? Absolutely. Here's the deal. The forward pass starts with the forward motion of the hand. So when he started forward with that, he was hit, which then knocked the ball backward. Well, if the pass has started forward here, so that makes it forward regardless of the direction that he's up down. But my question is, as we looked at this, it looked like the action was going backwards, Mike. If indeed it was backwards, would it then not then be a fumble? No, if, if his intent was to throw it forward, and he got a little flare there, and if you take a look at it, his intent was to throw a forward pass there. And so at, at all when you lean that direction, when you're gonna when you're gonna make that call, you're gonna lean to that being a forward pass. Well, we thank Mike Pereira very, very much. We've reached the end of the third quarter. 23 nothing. 49ers in front. 23 nothing as we begin the fourth quarter. Out. And now from the seven yard line, third and goal. Smith escapes. Darnell Dockett, and it throws just his second career interception in the red zone. A.J. Hawk got him, and now Darrell Washington gets him. We well, thought he had some. It's very rare that you can start on one side and come back to the other. Uncharacteristic mistake by Alex Smith. In fact, they had a lineman down the field. I'm surprised they didn't get called for that. Look at that. 
Yeah Joe Staley down in the end zone even if they would have completed that it's likely would have been uneligible receiver downfield. I'm not sure how they didn't pick that up. It's a moot point because obviously Arizona intercepted it. A new quarterback takes over. Replacing John Skelton. Richard Bartel. First down handoff trailing 23 nothing. Bartel playing in his second game this year. This is the third game of his career. Hit on two out of six in Minnesota for 22 yards with an interception. Backup quarterback, the first four games of the year. Pop. Jarring hit delivered there by Terrell Brown. Just an easy, quick outlet pass for Bartell. Nice form tackle there on the outside. Brown, there was questions. Brown took a ding to his knee during the course of practice during the week and was questionable whether he mm -hmm. would play, but obviously uh, playing well today. Well, Kevin Cobb, John Skelton, and now Richard Bartell. All playing quarterback. And all of them have had tough times. Skelton and now Bartell here today. Bartell played with Cleveland in 08, Washington in 09. Never got into a game. And played in one game with Arizona last year, an undrafted rookie free agent out of Tarleton State. Also drafted as a pitcher by the Cincinnati Reds, going all the way back to 2001. Forty Niners with 14.06 to play, leading 23 nothing. Now, Brian, did you have a chance to dig Ooh, into baby. some of that before the game Boy, today? You, you probably did with a crowd those, you run with. Those look pretty good. They're not as good that you can get on my dock and the Chesapeake, but those look pretty good. Kendall Hunter into the game, picks up a yard. Let's check in down in Los Angeles again with Kurt Menifee. Well, here's the first. Tennessee quarterback Matt Hasselbeck left the game with an injured elbow. So Jake Locker comes in, and the rookie throws his first NFL touchdown, hooking up with Nate Washington for a 40-yard score. It's 23-10 Atlanta, though, looking to bounce back from their loss last week in overtime to the Saints. Tom and Brian. Great, thank you. We'll look forward to seeing Atlanta, Brian, uh, next weekend following the Thanksgiving holiday and, of course, a Thanksgiving game Right here on Fox, and a good one, the undefeated Green Bay Packers against the Detroit Lions this coming Thursday. Smith tipped at the line of scrimmage. And Matthew Stafford, after a very poor start to the game today, had two early interceptions, but rallies the Lions back for a 49-35 win against Carolina. Ray Rice in a thriller. Tell you, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati have played some exciting games these last couple of weeks. And Jordy Nelson, ho hum. Uh, Cincinnati, tough, tough road, obviously, the last two weeks with Pittsburgh and Baltimore, but they showed me something in those two games. Smith running for his life, and I tell you, ever since Bruce Miller left this game with an injury. Not same uh, protection back there for Alex Smith. Holding to the 20 of the defense. Five yard penalty automatic. First down. Wow. That's A.J. Jefferson in his second year out of Fresno. Right in here. Boy, you get him off the field, and then just that little trail, that grab. You know, I don't know that it really inhibited the guy, but you can't get away with that. That's. That's just a lack of discipline here. Your team struggling. You get them off the field, and what some people would say is a penny ante penalty, but it's still a penalty. Don't grab the guy from behind. That's just it's not smart. And 
Bird Hunter. You know, you start talking about the 49ers, and, and, and Brian, you tell me, you know, it's probably safe to say now, so many were asking for a number of weeks, and rightfully so. You know, are they for real? It appears as though they're on their way to their eighth consecutive win, which would match the longest winning streak going all the way back to 1997. You, know, you brought up earlier about maybe some of the teams that they haven't played. The ones they have, they've beaten, with the exception of Dallas in overtime going all the way back to week two. Big hit there. But let's face it, you've seen all the, the heavyweight contenders this side in the NFC. What do you think? Well, these guys, what impresses me is some people are saying, well, it's the NFC West. Of course, they're eight at one, and now they're going to be at nine and one. Well, this is only their second NFC West game. The bulk of that is to come. So the, what has impressed me the most is their ability to go on the road and to win in Cincinnati, win in Philadelphia, win in Detroit. Now, Washington's not real good, but still going to the East Coast. Their ability to take this on the road in the early part of the season is what has sold me. Nice play to get a hand on it by Stuart Bradley and 49ers will punt it. Now we know there are a lot of football games left to be played but hey look everybody likes to do this. What if the season ended today Green Bay is one today New Orleans off. The Giants will play tonight Detroit won Chicago is winning. And as I said just earlier let's say for discussion purposes it stays like this. Who's better equipped to take their style of play on the road into Green Bay than what the San Francisco 49ers are doing and their ability to play good defense and run the ball. So they're they're configured very well for a lot of success in the playoffs. You know what, we're going to get back to some of that because I want to ask you about maybe some of the other teams looking over the final month and a half of the regular year. Alex Smith Michael Crabtree and the 49ers. Leading 23 nothing Crabtree with his seven catches for 120 yards today. Martell on the relief of Skelton. And he is sacked back to the 10 yard line by Alden Smith, who is a backup player, leads the 49ers. And they're punching one another out at the 30 yard line. Wide receiver and a defensive back. Looks like Deshaun Goldson was in the middle of all that. And there could be some objections with this. They'll see that was that was that got pretty violent. These two guys went at one another. They're still chipping and harping at one another there. Larry Fitzgerald trying to keep Doucette out of it. Well, there were a couple of Haymakers thrown in his deal right there yeah. by Goldson to start it. Uh, that's just that, and another know. one. No, nah, this is going to cost you here now. Goldson, and he'll be suspended for this. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 38, defense, 15-yard penalty, and 38 will be ejected from the game. Yep. No doubt about that. When he threw three punches at early Doucette. And you just particularly when a game is in this fashion, you're up 23 to nothing. You just got to be smarter than that. Oh, they, oh, see, they didn't see that shot. And as typical, what is it is, it's always the second guy. You got to be smarter than that in those situations. Well, it all started at D would do said That's a cheap shot. Larry Fitzgerald, there's there's a class guy trying to tell you, look, this is not the way you want to act. Trust me. I know one thing, the officials may not have seen that move by early Doucette, but Roger Goodell is not going to miss it. Oh, yeah, it's going to cost both these young guys. And it should. Now, this is where the officials got to be very careful because this is where it can get a little chippy. They've done a nice job keeping it under control. They go right to Doucette and he makes a catch. 
All right, things may be settling down here a little bit. Brian, I want to get you back. We have, we have a long way to go in this game, but right now the 49ers clearly in command of 23 to nothing. Now, there are a lot of intriguing teams on that playoff list we were looking at a moment ago. You and I saw that Chicago dismantling of Detroit last week. Catch made by D. Sutton. That's good enough for a first down, or I beg your pardon, that's DeMarco Sampson on the reception. You, know, you look inside some of those teams and we know about Green Bay we know about the 49ers. But the NFC South is still up for grabs. A one game lead for New Orleans over Atlanta. And of course the NFC East still up for grabs. Big one tonight. The Eagles and the Giants. Giants with a one game lead over Dallas who won an overtime at Washington today. And this is where it gets interesting because you're not just talking about division races, but the wild cards teams start to size each other up. And some of those tie breaking head to heads and how you've competed down the way. You're talking about the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions obviously vying for that. You get into the uh, obviously in the NFC South, both Atlanta and New Orleans, mm -hmm. both excellent teams. Only one will win the division. And what those head to head matchups entail. Chester Taylor, good strong running. Still on his feet inside the 40. Stiff arms his way to the 23 yard line. Right here, look at this. Everybody's up. You got you got nobody in a three-point stance. Everybody's coming from a two-point stance in the nature of the game. Obviously, Arizona going no huddle. Chester Taylor when they picked him up I'm surprised we haven't seen more of Chester Taylor in this Arizona offense his ability to run the ball and his receiver out of the backfield. And it's a touchdown reception by Larry Fitzgerald. How many sets of hands did that go through. You can see that they're always looking for it, Larry Fitzgerald, and here's why. This guy's covered one set of hands right through it, stays with it. Look at the focus. This is why this guy is among the best. He had two of those last week where the ball got tipped twice that he able to keep his focus on the ball. That is not easy to do. And you saw Fitzgerald, he knows that was the first career touchdown pass for Richard Bartell. So he turned around and handed him the football. Twenty three to seven Arizona on the board on the twenty three yard catch off the tip pass into the arms of Larry Fitzgerald and Bartell his first career touchdown throw to a guy who one day will be enshrined into the football hall of fame. There's very little doubt about that. You talk about a young man just turned 28 years old and today went over 9,000 career receiving yards. Well, nobody back for the 49ers. Again, races all the way back to pick it up. And we look out. Good angle to run him out of bounds. And here we go again. Michael Adams took a shot right there at Adam Snyder. Divisional opponents who don't like one another a little bit. In fact, both teams talked openly on that very topic during this entire week. And Jim Harbaugh. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit, number 27, kicking team, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And you don't like to see this lack of focus. I mean, this is obviously a good football team that's totally in charge of this game. Even in these situations, you don't want to see that focus leave you here. I got to tell you, I'm having a hard time. Maybe it was right there, walking over, and then the the shove and the punch. Well, I don't, I don't know where that came from, other than, uh, other than just the exchange there, and but and why the 49ers? That, that inside, I see it either. But they're trying to get it under control, so I'll applaud that. Stays on his feet. 
Well, you talk about Larry Fitzgerald, a young man you've known since he was a, a little boy growing up in Minneapolis last week against the Eagles. Driving a second quarter, twice caught the ball after being tipped, including a 10-yarder for a touchdown. Then this unbelievable over-the-shoulder 37-yard play that set up the game-winning touchdown. But he works on it. Yeah, and then the same type of thing, going through the hands, just the, just the focus the the discipline it takes, and that's why this guy is going to end up in the Hall of Fame. And and here you're going to see, this is one Hall of Famer, Russ Grimm, the offensive line coach, getting his receiver ready. This is the old Chris Carter drill. He learned this back in Minnesota and was a ball boy for us. Just this ability, this focus. There's quite a sight there. Two Hall of Famers, one in the Hall of Fame and one going to be in the Hall of Fame. And you look at those numbers, and like you say, Tom, it's it's a slam dunk. This guy. Uh, the work ethic and in the age of diva receivers you got to you got to appreciate the approach this guy has to the game both on and off the field. Of course a touchdown set an all time Cardinal franchise record surpassing Roy Green last week. And he hands a, the ball to Bartell his first career score and Fitzgerald not only first class on the field a first class young man. All the way. Hey, let me ask you a quick question. As we check on an injured player, I beg your pardon, down on the 38-yard uh, line, Dan Williams, number one pick a year ago out of Tennessee. And he is number 92 right there trying to make the tackle. Yeah, it looked like it just got, got twisted up some for his elbow. Looks like he's grabbing his elbow. Mm -hmm. Somehow he got... It disjointed a little bit. Well, they've been working on him now a little while. Hopefully, he's going to be all right. Like a pretty serious arm injury for the nose tackle, Dan Williams. Watch the contact coming in on Williams right there on the helmet by his own teammate on his left elbow. And right away, Players on his own team were looking to the sideline saying get the trainers out here immediately. Well, we certainly hope that young man's going to be all right. Under eight minutes to play. Across his midfield. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Well, Philip Rivers' struggles continue, trying to get the Chargers back in in San Diego in uh, Chicago. Pardon me. He throws a pick in the end zone for the year. 15 touchdowns, 16 interceptions thrown by Rivers. And right now, Chargers are holding on. Less than six minutes left. Up 31-20. Tom. All right. Thank you very much, Kurt. Frank Gore will watch the rest of this one. After you know, going into the game last week, he had a, an injured ankle, and he injured his knee in the second quarter. But pronounced himself fit for duty today and rushed for 88 yards. But Brian, they're not going to take a chance of re-injuring that thing. They're going to need him down the stretch. Absolutely. And the running back at this point in the season, nobody, and this is a physical, violent game for everybody, but no one takes more of a physical punishment than the running back position. Anytime you have an opportunity, such as a day like today when you're up 23 to 7, to get your lead horse rested, that's a good thing. And of course, it'll be a short work week for both the 49ers and the Ravens. They're already billing it the Harbaugh the, Bowl. The Harbaugh. The Harbaugh. I love it. Brothers Jim and John will meet as head coaches. On Thursday night back in your neck of the woods in Baltimore, but it'll be a great atmosphere for that game. Two of the real Titans. And of course, early in the day to get it all started. Right here on Fox, it'll be the Packers and the Lions with our pregame show getting underway at 11:30 Eastern, 8:30 Pacific. That's a good day of football now. Packers and the Lions, Thanksgiving, finish up with the Harbaugh. Two good defenses like we're gonna see. That's a good day of football. As he'll be handing out that galloping Gobbler Award. So 
Well, 5.30 to play. The 49ers will win their eighth game in a row. I think to a surprise, maybe of many around football, not only the 9 and 1 start, but they've outscored opponents by 95 points so far this year. Patrick Peterson has already returned three punts for touchdowns this year, waits on this one. All right, Brian Billick, he's able to smile now. It hadn't been that way all day long, has it? No, you watch the, the emotions right here. He's right from the get-go, getting his quarterback ready. He wants Alex Smith to play with the passion he did, and here's the decisions you make. Yes, no, should I have done this, should I have done that? No, okay, I'll go, oh my God, do I really, how, how long do I want to keep doing this? This guy's got a huge passion for the game. And at the end of the day, that sometimes the frustration of, you know what? Even when you're in control, even when you're up 23 to 7, it doesn't end until that final, that final gun. Of course, here you got to look at Harbaugh, who's grinding literally every single play. And then there used to be a time when Jimmy Johnson <laughs> yeah. did that. Yeah, you know what? And right now, Jimmy's thinking about, you know what? Life on my boat, and this is pretty good. And I tell people the best part of my job. I get to meet with these players on Friday and Saturday and you come in Sunday and you, you get a little feel for the game. You get that juices going and then when this is all done I get on our airplane. I don't care who won or lost. I'm going to sleep a lot better than either one of these coaches including Jim Harbaugh because he's on a short week. In fact as soon as this game's over I tell you right now this entire staff is heading right back down to Santa Clara and the 49ers offices because they're on a short week. They're going to go right back to their preparation. Not two seconds after this game's over. You know what, Welcome to the NFL. Tell the average guy at home. I mean precisely you say they're going back down to the practice facility. I mean literally walk us through what probably an hour by hour for the rest of this day is going to be like for the 49er coaches knowing they have another game on Thursday. What do they do as soon as this game's over? Well, the last thing you want to do is look forward to the next game. They had to take care of Arizona. So they had all the other assistants, your quality control guys. They've taken off all the film, all the games of the Baltimore Ravens. That's the first look of Vic Fangio or Brent Roman, the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, are going to get of the Ravens. And they're on a short week. That means in what you normally do in a week's time has to be done in a condensed period of time. They will be there until all hours of the morning looking at the film, starting to craft the game plan, getting the cutups ready for the players who are going to have to come in on a short week as it is. And we got a flag going down here. But just, just think about it. You've got an entire week's worth of work that has to con get condensed into a four day period of time. Well, really not even that long because you're traveling across the country probably Absolutely. on Tuesday, right? Which Pass that in itself. Number 26 defense automatic first down. Yeah, and he, he clearly tied into him here. But that that I question as well. Here's a team that you know how tough it is. We already talked about West Coast going to East Coast. Now you're going to do it on a short week. You know, if I'm if I'm Jim Harbaugh, I'm going, wait a minute now. This doesn't seem uh, the competitive disadvantage to me. My wife always used to get on me when we play on Thursday night games. She go, you can really get the game plan done by Thursday. Yeah, why don't you do that every week and take Friday and Saturday off even when you play on Sunday. <laughs> you know what? I didn't have an, a good answer for her when she suggested that. Well, I'll leave it to Kim. That's, That's good right. stuff there. Incomplete. And here's here's just and you know what this is when you talk about the players this is what Jim Harbaugh is about he has a personal relationship with every member of this football team and that's a hard thing to do as a head coach it's very easy to get removed but this is a guy that played for 15 years he grew up a coach's son talking football every night of his life at the kitchen table with his football coach and dad and his now football coach and brother this guy's whole life has been this game kind of a unique background in the way that he's become a head coach in the National Football League. Well, you know, Brian, uh, in your visit with him the other day, I know that no matter how hard you pry, no matter how hard you try to ask him what difference have you made to this organization and this team this year and this turnaround, there is not a second that will pass 
where he wants anything to do with taking any of the credit. Yeah, and, and you appreciate that. We talked about with Alex Smith and what's the transformation. He says it's all Alex. He's just working hard. Well, you know, you've had this, it's the same group that, that has struggled the last couple of years, and now you're sitting here at eight at one. Now these are good guys. They're just working hard. You got to, and that's not a criticism when you go back to, to what had gone on here with, you know, a couple of guys that I had worked with, Mike Nolan and Mike Singletary, good coaches. And, and there's not a substantial difference when you see a transformation of a team like the 49ers that typically you'd look at the change from losing to now winning and going, well, did they added this guy, they added that guy. In Atlanta, when they added Ryan, when Matt Ryan, they added Michael Turner, they added Tony Gonzalez. Well, these guys are the same guys. He's just been able to bring them together. And, and the fact that they buy into what he believes in, the connection of this guy is a former pro player. He knows what it's about. It's become a perfect marriage now between the talent that existed here and the mindset of Jim Harbaugh. First team timeout, a day 30 second timeout. Well, before this fourth down, 49ers will call a timeout. We remind you tonight on Fox, the entire Family Guy clan gets together for a Thanksgiving episode. You have to see it to believe it with all the traditions you'd expect and even a surprise visitor. It's an all-new Family Guy tonight, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, followed by an all-new American Dad on Fox. You know, and I talk about, and, and when you look at these organizations, and again, I go back to Mike Nolan and Mike Singletary. They're good. They're friends of mine. They coach me. And, and, and I don't want to be critical of them because, again, you got to walk a mile in a man's shoe before you criticize him, which is a good idea because if you do criticize, criticize him, then he's a mile away and you've got his shoes. <laughs> okay. But you've got to, you've got to give this organization, Trent Belke, uh, Jim Harbaugh, credit for recrafting what needed to get done. Uh, and, and what they've been able to put together here, it's fun to watch. Well, fourth down, and Bartell to run it. And he is very close. It took a hit. That'll be a penalty on Patrick Willis. So that'll be a first down. Yeah, and that's that gray area. Was he giving himself up? Not a necessarily a malicious hit by Patrick Willis. Personal foul, unnecessary reference, number 52. Defense, but Bartell clearly here is giving himself up. He's sliding, and now you can't do it. He gets that protection as he gets into the act of giving himself up, and that's exactly what he's doing here. The regrettable, regrettable part is for, for Willis is that I don't think he had the first down. Yeah, and Harbaugh, he's frustrated with it. He doesn't, you know, this guy played with passion. That's the rule. They called it correctly. It was the right call, but it's still a frustration that, gosh, is this really what we want to be? Is this what we want to call? But he was giving himself up. He was putting himself in that defenseless situation. Of course, it also keeps his drive alive because it didn't look like Bartell had enough for a first down. Incomplete. 3.46 to go. I'm sure on that Arizona sideline they're saying hang on a minute now this thing's not over quite yet. You know, obviously you would need a pair of touchdowns and a pair of two point conversions. But. Stranger things have happened and this is where you've got to hold on. That's why even in a game like this why it's so emotionally draining for the coaches and players because you've got to take it down to the final snap. getting by far his most significant playing time. He tried to find Fitzgerald for a second time in the end zone incomplete. And you kind of knew this is where it was going to go. Fitzgerald here at the bottom of the slot. Little nod trying to find that hole in the middle of the defense. Throwing it nice and high if you're going to throw it. That's the place to throw it in the red zone particularly when you're going to go to a guy like Larry Fitzgerald. How many times have we seen him come down with that very type of catch. Early do set into the end zone and complete broken up by Reggie Smith. 
So now another fourth down. And the challenge for for Ken Wisenhunt here you can see this is just a little bit behind him now. Certainly catchable. Actually thrown in the right spot. A nice safe throw in behind the defender. Justin Smith put a big hit on the quarterback. Reception made, but well short of the first down. And you can read the lips of Joe Harbaugh. Good job. And he's saying that every game about his defense this year. And it's finished. That's what he wanted to see. I want you to finish. I don't care what the circumstances are. Finish because there's a residual effect going down through the course of the season. Being in those situations, he recognizes that. 15 years in this league. He understands how hard it is to get every one of these wins and what it's going to take going forward. He will tell you it's all about next week, right? Right now, it's all about Baltimore. It's whoever we're playing this week. But he's got the bigger vision. He recognizes what they're fighting for. Home field advantage to the playoffs, or at least that first uh, 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 home game in the playoffs. Maybe a bye in the playoffs. The difference between now, that putting you with just one win, and you're in the championship game. He understands all that. He understands how this league works. You know, it's interesting to know that all three of those guys started this way with the 49ers in their first year as a head coach. I mean, that, that's saying something right there now. I mean, to have three sure. different guys go a combined 29 and three in their first year as head coach, and also tells you about the league that two of those three, two of those three guys got fired. <laughs> you know, that's the life in the NFL. Right. Uh, Steve Mariucci took over a pretty good football team, as did. Uh, Seifert that's not to say you know good or bad Bill Walsh obviously setting the foundation here Jim Harbaugh clearly taking over the most difficult of those situations taking nothing away from my friend Mooch or from uh, George Seifert but they took over some pretty good football teams at that time Jim Harbaugh taking over a good football talented team but not necessarily a good team that it is now. I know no one has spoken more uh, admirably of Jim Harbaugh than the man who so many years uh, was winning championships on the other side of the bay. John Matt hearing him talk frequently he wondered you know was this the year that Harbaugh with a lockout and no training camp was this a year he could walk in and 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 take over as a first year NFL head coach. And that was the interesting thing when we had these guys in week two they barely knew one another. Because they had just come out of training camp. Uh, now, obviously, a couple months removed. And again, as you said earlier, uh, very deferential Jim Harbaugh basically saying, nah, you know, we got over that pretty quick. He talked about the character of this team and about the personality. He liked the personality of this team and how that has come to the forefront, and he's tried to tap into that. Still to the very end, right there. Jim Harbaugh teaching and again the unique background the thing I respect most about Jim Harbaugh is that a lot of pro guys think and, I, and I've been fortunate enough to be around some guys that I've helped get into the profession former pro guys and it's usually a very short conversation well, you want to coach sure yeah well but wait a minute you mean I don't get Tuesdays off and you're, I got to stay here how late during the week and you're only going to pay me how much and then you see their backside and they go out Jim Harbaugh paid the price he not only had the career in the NFL because of his coaching dad the experience in Western Kentucky goes down and, and to University of San Diego and that's not an easy you know job when you take one of those kind of jobs then goes to Stanford he learned the coaching craft at the coaching level at the collegiate level to bring back into the NFL and I give him a great deal of credit for that. Well that was quite a racket they had going when Jim still as a player went to work as a non paid assistant for his dad at Western Kentucky. John Harbaugh was an assistant yeah. at the University of Cincinnati and all the players that weren't good enough to play in Cincinnati. One brother was sending them to dad and the other brother down the road in Western Kentucky. That's right. That's, and that's how it works. I have a feeling they won't be sharing a lot of those ideas come Thursday night.
Well, of course, everybody remembers the great Joe Montana, and then right behind him, Steve Young, legendary Hall of Fame coach, the late Bill Walsh, who uh, Brian Billick, you were extremely close with. As there's a first down carry, penalty flags on the field. Personal foul grabbing the face mask, number 58. Defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, we spent a lot of time on the 49ers here, and you know, all they've got going on. And quickly, you look at the Arizona Cardinals, and they like a lot of these young defenders, as you talked about. You know, early in the game, obviously they have some issues at quarterback till they get Kevin Cobb back, and even then, they've got to figure out what they want to do moving forward at that position next year. They do, as we said in the open, they are a developing team. They've got some good young talent. Ken Wisenhunt, he's been to the championship game, to the Pro Bowl, so obviously the pedigree is there. But he's going through a transformation, turning this team defensively and offensively into what he wants them to be by bringing the right personnel in and changing the structure of what they've done. All right, Brian, everybody is watching the Green Bay Packers as they are trying to go through the regular season unbeaten. What about the 49ers and looking ahead? We talked about Baltimore on Thanksgiving night inside their division back to back games. The Steelers come here. Boy, what a good game that'll be. Then you round it out two divisional games against sub 500 opponents. Well, obviously within the division, you got to figure how that's going to figure uh, uh, finish off. But the game at Baltimore and then Pittsburgh here is going to be a real benchmark for them to tell you indeed is this a championship caliber team. I would say that if they can just split with those two and you would think obviously in Baltimore a tough task come back and beat Pittsburgh. But if they can just split with those two, then I got to say they, they are going to be charging into the playoffs confident. They'll likely have a bye. Uh, and like I said, who's better configured? If indeed it goes that way, we got a long way to go. Who's better configured to go into a place like Lambeau than the way this San Francisco 49er team is going? Well, that'll take care of that. Certainly not as dominant a win as Jim Harbaugh would have liked, but a win nonetheless. They've won eight in a row for the first time since 1997. They go to 9-1 on the year. In a 23-7 final. Gore back in the lineup, rushes for 88. And we'll be back to Candlestick Park in a moment.